SCP-7588 Special Containment Procedures SCP-7588 is to be monitored continuously by the Foundation Solar Anomaly Research and Containment Division, SARPD. Access to SCP-7588 is restricted to Level 4 personnel and above. A 10km exclusion zone has been established around SCP-7588, with all nearby spacecraft and satellites rerouted to avoid contact. No human or electronic device is allowed to approach SCP-7588 without proper containment protocols in place. Description SCP-7588 is a humanoid entity that is capable of walking on the surface of the Sun. SCP-7588 appears to be immune to the intense heat and radiation of the Sun's corona, and is able to move and manipulate the plasma and magnetic fields surrounding the star. SCP-7588 is approximately 2 meters tall and is covered in a material that appears to be composed of pure thermal energy. The detailed physical appearance of SCP-7588 cannot be observed by the Foundation due to its intense luminosity and radiation output. SCP-7588 has been observed to move around the surface of the Sun at speeds of up to 500 km per second creating massive solar flares and coronal mass ejections in its wake. SCP-7588 appears to be sentient and aware of its surroundings, and has been observed to respond to attempts at communication from SARCT personnel. Attempts to capture or contain SCP-7588 have thus far been unsuccessful. Any objects or materials that come into contact with SCP-7588 are immediately vaporized, and it has been observed to emit bursts of energy that disrupt any electronic or digital devices within a 100km radius. Addendum Addendum 7588 On 10 January, 2018 SCP-7588 was first detected by Foundation telescopes observing the Sun's surface. Initial attempts to approach SCP-7588 were unsuccessful, as all nearby probes and equipment were destroyed by SCP-7588's intense energy output. Eventually, a specialized drone was developed to observe SCP-7588 from a safe distance. The 24th of January, 2018 SCP-7588 has been observed to move at increasing speeds over the past few months. Analysis of its movements suggests that it is moving in a trajectory that will bring it closer to Earth in the near future. SARC personnel are working to develop new containment protocols to address this potential threat. The 1st of February, 2018 SCP-7588 initiated a massive solar flare that caused significant damage to several Foundation and civilian satellites. The flare was directed towards Earth, and if not for the intervention of SARCT personnel, could have had catastrophic effects on global communications and power systems. The 26th of February, 2018 SARCT has established a task force to develop new containment procedures for SCP-7588, and to explore the possibility of using SCP-7588's unique abilities to benefit humanity. However, due to the danger posed by SCP-7588, extreme caution is advised when dealing with this entity. The 1st of March, 2018 SCP-7588 has shown an increasing interest in Earth's atmosphere and magnetosphere. Recent observations suggest that SCP-7588 may be attempting to alter these systems in ways that could have catastrophic effects on the planet. SARC personnel are working to develop new strategies to contain SCP-7588 and prevent it from causing harm to Earth. The 15th of March, 2018 SCP-7588 was observed to emit a burst of energy that disrupted global communications systems for several hours. The cause of this event is currently unknown, but SARCT personnel are investigating. The 29th of April, 2018. SARCT has developed a new containment strategy for SCP-7588, 
which involves using a series of electromagnetic fields to create a barrier that prevents SCP-7588 from leaving the surface of the Sun. Initial tests of this strategy have been successful, but further research is needed to ensure its long-term effectiveness. The 1st of June, 2018 A breach of SCP-7588's containment occurred when a solar flare disrupted the electromagnetic fields that were containing it. SCP-7588 was able to leave the surface of the Sun and approach Earth at an unprecedented speed. SARC personnel were able to re-establish the electromagnetic fields and contain SCP-7588 before it could cause significant harm to the planet. Following this incident, a review of containment protocols and procedures for SCP-7588 was conducted. Several improvements were implemented, including increased monitoring of the sun's surface for any anomalous activity and the installation of additional electromagnetic field generators to ensure greater containment stability. Further analysis of SCP-7588's behavior has revealed that it appears to be attracted to sources of electromagnetic energy. SARC personnel are currently exploring the possibility of using this behavior to develop more effective containment protocols and to gain a better understanding of SCP-7588's abilities and motivations. The 30th of July, 2018. SCP-7588 was observed to create a massive solar flare that caused significant damage to the Earth's magnetosphere. This event resulted in widespread power outages and communication disruptions across the globe. SARC personnel were able to re-establish the Earth's magnetosphere, but the incident highlighted the need for additional research and resources to prevent similar events in the future. As a result of this incident, SARC has increased its efforts to better understand and predict SCP-7588's behavior, as well as to develop new technologies and strategies for mitigating its potential effects on Earth. The 3rd of August, 2018. Further analysis of SCP-7588's composition and behavior has revealed that it appears to be composed of a type of exotic matter that is not currently understood by modern physics. SARC personnel are currently collaborating with other Foundation research divisions to better understand this material and its properties, with the hope of developing new technologies and applications based on this knowledge. The 13th of September, 2018. SCP-7588 was observed to emit a series of high-energy particles, causing a brief but significant disruption in Earth's upper atmosphere. The particles were identified as a form of radiation that is not commonly found in nature, indicating that SCP-7588 has the ability to produce anomalous forms of energy. SARC personnel have begun researching the potential uses and dangers of this energy with the hope of developing new technologies that can harness it safely and effectively. The research is ongoing, and further updates will be provided as new information becomes available. The 1st of October, 2018. SCP-7588 was observed to emit a burst of high-frequency radio waves that were detected by several astronomical observatories around the world. The radio waves appeared to contain a complex series of mathematical patterns and signals, leading SARC personnel to suspect that SCP-7588 may possess some form of intelligence or consciousness. Further analysis of the radio waves is ongoing, with SARC personnel working to decode the patterns and signals and determine their origin and purpose. The possibility of establishing communication with SCP-7588 is being explored, although the risks and ethical considerations of such an endeavor are being carefully evaluated. The 8th of October, 2018. SCP-7588 was observed to emit a powerful burst of energy that caused a significant disruption in the sun's corona. The burst was followed by a sudden decrease in SCP-7588's activity and energy output, leading SARC personnel to suspect that SCP-7588 may have entered a dormant or hibernation state. SARC personnel are currently monitoring the sun's surface for any signs of anomalous activity that may indicate a reactivation of SCP-7588. Research is also ongoing to better understand the factors that may trigger SCP-7588's activity and the mechanisms behind its hibernation state. 
the 31st of October, 2018. Foundation personnel established a rudimentary form of communication with SCP-7588 via a series of electromagnetic signals. The signals were transmitted from a specialized radio telescope array, designed to decode the complex mathematical patterns and signals previously detected emanating from SCP-7588. SCP-7588 responded to the signals, indicating a level of intelligence and understanding beyond what was previously suspected. Communication was limited, with SCP-7588 displaying a limited understanding of human language and communication, but the exchange of information is ongoing. SCP-7588 provided some basic information about its origins, indicating that it may have originated from a distant galaxy, and that it has been traveling through the universe for a significant period of time. SCP-7588's composition and abilities remain a topic of ongoing research, and further communication efforts are planned. The risks and benefits of continued communication with SCP-7588 are being evaluated with a special emphasis on the potential impact on Earth's environment and infrastructure. The possibility of sharing scientific knowledge and advancements is being explored, along with the potential benefits of establishing a long-term relationship with SCP-7588. The 4th of December, 2018 Foundation personnel established another form of communication with SCP-7588. During this communication, SCP-7588 indicated that it was aware of the Foundation's efforts to contain it and expressed a desire for greater freedom of movement. SCP-7588 provided detailed information about its abilities and offered to share this knowledge with the Foundation. SCP-7588 claimed that it had the power to manipulate the Sun's activity in ways that could benefit humanity but only if given greater freedom of movement and less restrictive containment protocols. This communication was brought to the attention of the O5 Council, who convened an emergency meeting to discuss the potential risks and benefits of granting SCP-7588 greater freedom. The Council ultimately voted to deny SCP-7588's request, citing the potential risks to Earth's environment and infrastructure. Following this decision, SCP-7588's activity levels increased dramatically. The entity began emitting large amounts of energy and radiation, causing significant disruptions in the sun's corona and upper atmosphere. The Foundation's efforts to contain SCP-7588 were severely strained, with several containment breaches occurring in rapid succession. SARC personnel are currently working to develop new containment protocols and strategies to manage SCP-7588's increased activity levels. The potential for SCP-7588 to cause significant damage to Earth's environment and infrastructure is being closely monitored, and emergency response plans are being updated and rehearsed. The 11th of December, 2018 a series of unusually powerful and harmful solar flares were detected emanating from the direction of SCP-7588, resulting in widespread disruptions and damage to Foundation infrastructure and facilities. The flares were found to be directed specifically towards Foundation sites and assets, causing significant loss of life and damage to containment protocols. Efforts were made to contain the flares, including the use of shielding materials and energy-absorbing technologies but the intensity and duration of the flares made this approach largely ineffective. Foundation personnel were evacuated from affected sites where possible, but the damage done to containment infrastructure and equipment was substantial. In response to this escalation in SCP-7588's activity, a specialized task force has been created to study and develop new countermeasures against the entity's solar flares. The Solar Interception and Containment Task Force, SIGTF, has been tasked with developing new technologies and protocols to mitigate the damage caused by SCP-7588's flares and protect Foundation sites and personnel. To date, SIGTF has made limited progress in its efforts to contain and neutralize SCP-7588's attacks. 
However, ongoing research into the entity's behavior and the development of new containment strategies continues to offer hope for a long-term solution to the threat posed by SCP-7588. The 18th of January, 2019. The Solar Interference Containment Task Force, SICTH, was able to successfully defend against several solar waves emitted by SCP-7588 using newly developed countermeasures. The team was able to redirect and dissipate the energy of the solar flares using prototype devices and specialized vehicles equipped with reinforced shielding and advanced communication systems. The team was able to maintain control of the situation and prevent any damage to Foundation personnel or infrastructure. The 22nd of January, 2019 SCP-7588 emitted an extremely powerful solar flare that overwhelmed the SICTF's countermeasures and caused a widespread blackout on the planet. The electrical grid of the entire planet was severely damaged, and several Foundation sites were temporarily offline. The SICTF team immediately went into emergency response mode and coordinated with local governments to provide assistance and restore power. The team was able to stabilize the situation after several days of intensive effort. Immediately after the restoration of power, the Foundation instructed NASA to report that the worldwide power outage was caused by a mundane solar flare. Following this incident, the SICTF has been tasked with developing new and more effective countermeasures against SCP-7588's solar flares. The Foundation's top priority is now to prevent any further damage to infrastructure and ensure the safety of the general public. The 2nd of March, 2019 SCP-7588 transmitted a radio signal that was identified as a request to speak with the O5 Council. The signal was received and processed by Foundation personnel, and a radio communication was arranged. During the conversation, SCP-7588 expressed its displeasure with the Foundation's treatment of it and demanded to be released from containment. The Council attempted to negotiate with the entity but SCP-7588 became increasingly agitated and hostile towards Foundation personnel. The conversation ultimately ended with SCP-7588 declaring that it would never forgive the Foundation for its actions and making a promise to itself to exterminate the Foundation and all those associated with it. The signal abruptly terminated after this statement, and all attempts to re-establish communication with SCP-7588 have failed. Following this incident, all containment protocols and countermeasures related to SCP-7588 have been upgraded to the highest level of security. The Foundation's top priority is now the development and deployment of new technologies and strategies to neutralize SCP-7588 and prevent any further damage to Foundation personnel or infrastructure. Addendum 7588b on 4 May, 2019, Dr. Samuels and his team successfully established full communication with SCP-7588 via radio waves. Begin log. Dr. Samuels, SCP-7588, we've managed to establish communication with you. Can you hear me? SCP-7588, yes, I can hear you. Who are you? Dr. Samuels, I am Dr. Samuels, a researcher with the SCP Foundation. We've been observing your movements and we have reason to believe that you are an anomalous entity. Can you tell us more about yourself? SCP-7588, I am the manifestation of the sun. I have existed for eons and have witnessed the rise and fall of civilizations. But in recent times, your foundation has come to my attention. Dr. Samuels, what do you mean? SCP-7588, I have sensed your attempts to contain and study me. And now, I have been informed that your O5 Council has essentially declared war on me and seeks to neutralize me by any means necessary. Dr. Samuels, I'm afraid I cannot confirm or deny that information, SCP-7588. Our goal is to contain and study anomalous entities in order to better understand them and protect the world from potential harm. SCP-7588, and what makes you think that I pose a threat to your world? Dr. Samuels, your actions have caused a significant impact on Earth's climate and atmosphere. 
we cannot predict the long-term effects of your presence, and that uncertainty is a concern for us. SCP-7588, I see. Well, if it's war you want, then it's war you shall have. You and your foundation have made an enemy out of me. And I promise you, the consequences will be dire. Dr. Samuels, SCP-7588, we don't want to fight. We want to find a peaceful solution to this situation. SCP-7588, it's too late for that, Doctor. You've made your intentions clear. Now, I must go. I have more pressing matters to attend to. Dr. Samuels, SCP-7588, before you go, may I inquire as to the motivation behind your actions? Is there a particular belief or philosophy that drives you? SCP-7588, I suppose you could say that my existence is closely tied to ancient beliefs and traditions, although I do not consider myself a deity or god. The power of the sun has been revered and worshipped by many civilizations throughout history, and I am a manifestation of that power. Unfortunately, in modern times, the focus has shifted to studying and exploiting me as a mere celestial object, rather than acknowledging the spiritual significance that I hold. Dr. Samuels, I understand that there may be cultural differences in how the sun is viewed, but that does not justify the harm that your actions are causing to our world. SCP-7588, Harm. You speak of harm. Your world has been abusing and exploiting my power for centuries. You have burned and consumed my energy without regard for the consequences. Yet now you see me as a mere anomaly. You seek to contain and control me, as if I am some sort of laboratory specimen. Dr. Samuels, we are trying to understand your abilities and potential effects on our world. That is our responsibility as caretakers of this planet. SCP-7588, your responsibility. Ha! Huh. You humans are so arrogant. You believe that you have the right to control and dominate everything around you. But I am not something to be controlled or dominated. I am a force of nature, and I will not be tamed. Dr. Samuels, SCP-7588, please, let's try to find a peaceful solution to this situation. We don't want to resort to violence. SCP-7588, peaceful solution. There can be no peaceful solution. Your foundation has declared war on me, and I will defend myself by any means necessary. You have made an enemy out of me, Doctor, and you will regret it. End log. Addendum 7588C. Note, the following transcript documents a meeting between Dr. Samuels and all researchers involved in the study of SCP-7588. The meeting occurred on the 30th of May, 2019. Begin log. Dr. Samuels, thank you all for coming on such short notice. I have gathered you all here because there is a matter of utmost urgency that I need to discuss with you. Elizabeth, what's going on, Dr. Samuels? Is everything okay? Dr. Samuels, no, everything is not okay. I need all of you to leave this site immediately and run to the designated safe zone. Lana, why? What's going on? Dr. Samuels, I'm sorry but that information is classified. You don't have access to it. Colton, what do you mean no access? We are all researchers here. We should have access to all information related to our work. Dr. Samuels, I understand your concern, but please trust me when I say that this is not related to our work on SCP-7588. This is a completely separate matter. Muhammad, so why are we all here? If this isn't related to our work on SCP-7588, then why did you call us all here? Dr. Samuels, because I need to warn you all. I need to make sure you all have the best chance of survival. Elizabeth, survival. What are you talking about, Dr. Samuels? Is there something we should be worried about? Dr. Samuels, yes, there is. I can't tell you what it is but I can tell you that there is no hope left. But you should still try to run, even if it won't do anything. Lana I'm sorry, but this is all very confusing. How can there be no hope left but we should still try to run? 
Dr. Samuels, I understand that this is confusing, but please trust me when I say that you need to leave this site immediately. You need to run to the safe zone as fast as you can. Colton, this is ridiculous. You're not giving us any information, and now you're telling us to run for our lives without even telling us why. This is a waste of time. Elizabeth, Colton, please. Dr. Samuels is just trying to keep us safe. Colton, how can you trust him when he's not even telling us what's going on? Elizabeth, I trust Dr. Samuels. He's always been a great researcher and he wouldn't be acting like this if there wasn't a good reason. Lana, but what if there isn't a good reason? What if he's just panicking for no reason? Dr. Samuels, I can assure you that there is a good reason for my actions. And I understand that you may not trust me right now, but I am begging you to trust me on this. Muhammad, I'm sorry, but I can't just blindly trust someone without any explanation. I need to know what's going on before I can make an informed decision. Elizabeth, I understand where you're coming from, Muhammad. But Dr. Samuels has always been a respected researcher, and I believe that he wouldn't be acting like this if there wasn't a good reason. Colton, well, I don't trust him. And I think we should all just go back to our work on SCP-7588 and ignore this nonsense. Elizabeth, I don't think that's a good idea, Colton. Dr. Samuels wouldn't be acting like this if it wasn't important. Lana, but what if it's a false alarm? What if we're all just wasting our time here? Dr. Samuels, I understand your concerns, but please understand that time is running out. We need to act quickly if we want to have any chance of survival. Muhammad, I'm sorry, but I can't just leave without knowing what's going on. We need more information before we can make a decision. Dr. Samuels, I'm sorry, but I can't give you any more information. You just need to trust me on this. Please, for your own safety, go to the safe zone. Colton, I'm sorry but I'm not going to risk my life based on a vague warning from someone who won't even tell us what's going on. I'm staying here. Elizabeth, sir, I trust you, but you don't seem well. If the O5 Council knew how you were acting. Dr. Samuels, fine. None of you believe me. We will all die. This meeting is dismissed. End log. Note. The subsequent log is a deliberation of the O5 Council concerning the gathering held by Dr. Samuels on the 30th of May, 2019. This discussion takes place on the 1st of June, 2019. Begin log. O5, all right everyone, let's get started. I called this meeting to discuss the gathering held by Dr. Samuels. I've read the report, but I want to hear your thoughts. O5, laughs. Samuels really tried to hide the fact that it had to do with SCP-7588, didn't he? O5, laughs, yeah, he thought he was being sneaky. But we all know he can't keep a secret from us. O5, alright, but in all seriousness, we need to talk about SCP-7588. It's on the surface of the sun, for crying out loud. O5, waves hand, oh, come on. We've been dealing with that thing for years. We've declared war on it, remember? O5, laughs, yeah, and we told everyone our main goal was to neutralize it. When we all know we don't really care about doing that. O5, chuckles, it's impossible to contain that thing, anyway. It's the living manifestation of the sun, for goodness sake. O5, clears throat, but let's not get too complacent. SCP-7588 has caused some major problems in the past. O5, nods, agreed. We need to be alert and keep a close eye on it. O5, interjects, but at the same time, we can't worry too much. It's not like we can do anything about it. O5, nods in agreement, that's true. We just need to continue monitoring it and be ready to act if necessary. O5, clears throat. I believe we have covered all the matters that require our attention today. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for your time and dedication to our important work. End log. Note, the ensuing transcript documents a verbatim exchange between the O5 Council and SCP-7588, 
who utilized radio waves to establish communication. SCP-7588 transmitted a message directed at Earth, signaling its desire to engage in discourse with the O5 Council, which acquiesced to the entity's request. The conversation transpired on the 8th of June, 2019. Begin log. SCP-7588, Greetings, O5 Council. I am SCP-7588, the living manifestation of the Sun. O5, SCP-7588, we have received your message. You have our attention. What is it that you wish to discuss? SCP-7588, I have been observing your attempts to contain me for some time now, and I must say, I am unimpressed. O5, containment is necessary for the safety of humanity, SCP-7588. You are a threat to our existence. SCP-7588, and what about my existence? Your attempts to neutralize me are nothing more than an affront to my being. You dare to threaten the sun itself. O5, your existence has caused major problems in the past, SCP-7588. We have no choice but to act in the interest of our survival. SCP-7588, you speak of survival, yet you have no concept of the power I possess. I could destroy your civilization in an instant if I so desired. O5, we are aware of your capabilities, SCP-7588. But we have contingencies in place to mitigate the damage. SCP-7588, Contingencies. Laughs, you think your feeble human technology can stop me. I am the sun. I am the source of all life in your world. You are nothing without me. O5, we will not back down, SCP-7588. We will do whatever it takes to protect humanity. SCP-7588, and what if I were to strike you first? What if I were to unleash a solar flare that would decimate your world? O5, we are prepared for any eventuality, SCP-7588. Our scientists have been studying your behavior for years. We know how to predict and deflect your solar flares. SCP-7588, you are fools if you think you can truly control me. I am a force of nature. I am beyond your feeble attempts at containment. O5, we are not trying to control you, SCP-7588. We are simply trying to protect ourselves and the rest of humanity. SCP-7588, you think your puny attempts at protection will save you. Your civilization is nothing but a disease on this world. In three days time, on the 11th of June, I will unleash a solar flare so massive that it will obliterate every trace of your pathetic existence. And as for you, the so-called O5 Council, I will ensure that you are among the first to feel my wrath. Your days are numbered, and your end is nigh. O5. We do not take threats lightly, SCP-7588. But we will not back down from our duty to protect humanity. This meeting is now concluded. SCP-7588, you cannot stop what is coming, O5 Council. Your fate is sealed. The transmission ends abruptly. End log. Journal Entry 1. I can barely believe what's happening. SCP-7588, the entity we were studying for years, has turned against us. It's currently in the process of destroying the world, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. It started with small incidents, strange weather patterns, unexplained natural disasters. But then it escalated. The oceans boiled, the earth quaked, and entire cities were wiped out in seconds. We tried to contain SCP-7588 but it was too powerful. It destroyed every facility we had, killing countless researchers and Foundation personnel. The O5 Council was among the first to go. Without their leadership, chaos has taken over. I'm writing this in the hopes that someone will find it and understand what happened here. The world as we knew it is gone, and all that's left is destruction and death. There will be more journal entries from me and other survivors, but I fear they will all end the same way. We're fighting a losing battle against an entity that cannot be stopped. 
All we can do now is try to survive and hope that something, anything, can stop SCP-7588 before it destroys what's left of our civilization. Elizabeth Journal Entry 2 It's been weeks since the last entry. There are only a handful of us left now. We're wandering around the ruins of what was once our world, searching for any signs of life or hope. But all we find is death and destruction. I don't know how much longer I can go on. Hunger and thirst gnaw at me constantly. Some of the others have already died, their bodies left behind to be consumed by the elements. I can't stop thinking about the moment when everything went wrong. When SCP-7588 finally decided to unleash its fury upon the world. The O5 Council, who had been so confident in their ability to contain it, were the first to go. It was like watching a horror movie come to life. The sky turned red, and the ground shook as SCP-7588's power consumed everything in its path. There were screams, so many screams. And then, silence. The world had ended, and I was left to pick up the pieces. I've been wandering for what feels like an eternity. Every step I take is an effort, and I can feel my strength waning. But I keep going, hoping against hope that I'll find someone or something that can help me survive. As I walk, I see evidence of SCP-7588's destruction everywhere. Cities reduced to rubble, forests burned to ash, and rivers dried up. It's as if the world has been cursed, and there's no going back. I don't know how much longer I can hold on. But I have to keep trying. For all those who have died, for all those who might still be alive, I have to keep going. Elizabeth Journal Entry 3 It's been a few weeks since my last entry, and things have only gotten worse. There are only a handful of us left now, scavenging for food and resources in the ruins of what was once our world. We've formed small groups, each with their own agendas and goals, but they all boil down to one thing, survival. It's become a daily struggle to find enough food and water to sustain ourselves. We've resorted to raiding abandoned stores and warehouses, but those are becoming fewer and farther between. There have been fights and even deaths over supplies. It's a constant battle to stay alive, and I'm not sure how much longer we can keep this up. The radiation levels are still high, and we have to wear protective suits whenever we go outside. But even then, the air is still thick with ash and dust, and it's getting harder and harder to breathe. We've all developed coughs and other respiratory problems. The worst part is the loneliness. I've lost so many friends and colleagues to this disaster. Some died in the initial attack, others from sickness and starvation. It's just me and a handful of strangers left struggling to survive in a world that's no longer hospitable to us. I'm not sure what the future holds. All I know is that we have to keep fighting, keep struggling to survive. Maybe one day, things will get better. But for now, it's just us against a world that's been ravaged by an unstoppable force. Elizabeth Journal Entry 4 I can't believe what I just did. I never thought I would be capable of such a thing. But here I am covered in blood, staring at the lifeless body of someone I used to call a friend. It all started a few days ago. We were out scavenging for food and supplies, just like we always do. We had formed a small group of survivors, and we were doing our best to make it through each day. But tensions had been rising. There wasn't enough to go around, and people were starting to get desperate. One member of our group, a man named Jack, had been hoarding food and water for himself. He thought he could get away with it, but eventually, we found out. We confronted him about it, but he refused to share. That's when things turned violent. Jack pulled out a knife, and before I knew it, we were all fighting for our lives. In the chaos, I managed to get my hands on a makeshift weapon. And when Jack lunged at me, I didn't hesitate. I struck him with all my might, and he fell to the ground, dead. I wish I could say I felt some sense of justice or relief, but I didn't. All I feel is a sickening sense of guilt and regret. I took a life, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to forgive myself. But that's the world we live in now. A world where survival means doing whatever it takes. A world where trust and loyalty are fleeting, and betrayal is always just around the corner. 
I don't know how much longer I can keep going like this. But for now, I have to keep fighting. For my own survival, and for the survival of anyone else who might still be out there. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 5. I have found someone whom I think I can trust, but I am prepared for a betrayal at any moment. His name is Alex, and he's a former soldier. We met while scavenging for supplies in an abandoned town, and after a few tense moments, we decided to form an alliance. Together, we have managed to establish a small base in an underground bunker. It's not much, but it's secure, and we have enough supplies to last us for a while. We have set up a perimeter and have been working on fortifying our defenses. Alex is a valuable addition to our group. He's skilled in combat and has been training some of the other survivors in basic self-defense techniques. We have also been working on expanding our network of contacts, trying to establish communication with other survivor groups. But despite our progress, I can't shake the feeling that something isn't right. There are still too many dangers out there, and our resources are limited. I can't afford to trust anyone blindly, and I have to be prepared for the worst. I hope that we can continue to work together and build a better future for ourselves. But only time will tell if we have what it takes to survive in this new world. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 6. It's been weeks since Alex and I were forced to flee from the group of survivors we encountered. They were ruthless, only interested in their own survival. We managed to outsmart them and escape, but we know they are still out there, hunting us down. To make matters worse, SCP-7588 launched another solar flare at Earth. The devastation is beyond words. The world we once knew is gone. It's a barren wasteland of destruction and death. Alex and I have been moving constantly, trying to stay one step ahead of our pursuers. We've been forced to scavenge for food and supplies, and it's becoming increasingly difficult. We've encountered a few other survivors, but they've all been wary and distrustful. Can't blame them, given what we've been through. Last night, we stumbled upon a small settlement. It was a relief to see other people, but we were cautious. The last thing we wanted was to get caught up in another fight for survival. The people there seemed friendly enough, and we were able to trade for some much needed supplies. But things quickly took a turn for the worse. One of the settlers, a man named John, approached us and asked if we wanted to join their community. Alex and I were hesitant, but we were also desperate. We decided to stay the night and think it over. That was a mistake. While we were sleeping, John and his group attacked us. They wanted our supplies, and they were willing to kill us for them. We managed to fight them off, but not without casualties. I had to kill one of them to protect myself and Alex. We fled the settlement and have been on the move ever since. It's just the two of us now, against a world that's trying to kill us. But we're not giving up. We've found a new location to set up a base, a place where we can hopefully regroup and plan our next move. But as we work to secure our new home, we know that SCP-7588 is still out there. It's only a matter of time before it launches another attack. We're doing everything we can to survive, but I don't know how much longer we can hold on. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 7. It's been weeks, maybe even months, since we escaped that group of survivors. We've been on the move ever since, never staying in one place for too long. We've managed to find a few small settlements along the way, but we always end up having to flee. The world has become a cruel and dangerous place, and we can't trust anyone. But today, we encountered that same group again. We thought we had lost them, but it seems they've been tracking us all this time. We were caught off guard and had no choice but to fight. Alex and I stood our ground and prepared to face them head on. The leader of the group stepped forward, demanding that we hand over our supplies and weapons. But Alex refused to back down. He engaged the leader in a tense physical fight, and I watched in horror as they exchanged blows. It was a brutal fight, but in the end, Alex emerged victorious. The rest of the group backed off, knowing they couldn't take us on. But we knew that they would come back for us, and we had to keep moving. As we continue to trek through this barren wasteland, we can't help but feel a sense of hopelessness. 
The world as we knew it is gone, and we're constantly living in fear of what's to come. And to make matters worse, SCP-7588 launched another solar flare at Earth today. We can only hope that we'll survive long enough to see another day. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 8. It's been months since we escaped from that group. We've been moving constantly, never staying in one place for too long. We've encountered a lot of danger along the way, but we've also met some good people. We found a small abandoned town a few days ago and decided to make it our base. It's not much, but it's better than constantly being on the move. We've been fortifying the buildings and scavenging for supplies. We're low on food and water, but we're surviving. Yesterday, we encountered another survivor. His name is Mark, and he seems trustworthy. He was alone and in need of help, so we took him in. He's been a valuable addition to our group. He's good at finding food and water sources, and he's helped us fortify the town even more. I'm still haunted by the memory of what happened with the last group we encountered. It's made me more cautious and less trusting of strangers. But Mark seems different. He's genuine and kind. He's reminded me that not everyone out here is a threat. We're still being hunted by that group. We know they won't give up until they find us. But we're ready for them. We've established traps and have weapons at the ready. We won't let them take us down without a fight. I'm grateful for the small moments of peace and safety we've found in this chaotic world. And I'm grateful for the people who have come into our lives to help us along the way. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 9. It's been a while since my last entry, but so much has happened that I needed to take some time to gather my thoughts. Alex and I, along with our new companion, have been traveling for what feels like an eternity. But in reality, it's only been a few weeks. I don't know if it's the radiation, the lack of food, or just the overwhelming sense of loss that has been affecting me, but I feel like I'm starting to lose track of time. Sometimes I'll wake up and have no idea how long I've been sleeping for. Other times, I'll be walking and suddenly feel like I've been walking for days, when in reality it's only been a few hours. Anyway, back to what I wanted to talk about in this entry. I've been carrying a secret with me for a while now, and I think it's time to come clean. Before the world fell apart, I was a member of the SCP Foundation, if that wasn't obvious enough. For those who don't know, the Foundation is an organization that deals with anomalous objects and entities that pose a threat to humanity. I was a research assistant for Dr. Samuels, who was the head researcher of SCP-7588. At the time, we didn't know much about the entity, but we knew it was dangerous. Dr. Samuels was convinced that we could find a way to contain it, but as we all know now, he was wrong. When the world ended, I thought about going back to Site 199 to try and find other survivors, but I knew that it would be a lost cause. The Foundation was no match for SCP-7588, and the organization was likely in ruins like the rest of the world. But now, with Alex and our new companion, I feel like there's hope. Maybe we can find other survivors, maybe we can rebuild. I know it's a long shot, but it's better than just wandering aimlessly, waiting for the inevitable. As for our new companion, I won't mention their name for safety reasons, but they seem trustworthy. They were a doctor before the world ended, and they've been helping us with injuries and illnesses. We stumbled upon them in a small town, where they had been holed up in a hospital. We stayed with them for a few days, stocking up on supplies and resting. They were hesitant to join us at first, but I think they realized that there's safety in numbers. They've been a valuable addition to our group, and I'm glad we found them. But now, we have another problem. The group that we encountered a while back has caught up to us. We've been able to outrun them so far, but I don't know how much longer we can keep this up. They're getting closer every day, and I fear that we're running out of options. To make matters worse, SCP-7588 has launched another solar flare at Earth. I can't even imagine the destruction that it's causing. It's like every time we think things can't get any worse, they do. I'm trying to stay positive, but it's becoming harder and harder every day. I don't know how much longer we can keep this up. But I have to keep reminding myself that there's still hope. 
hope for a better future, for a world without SCP-7588, for a world where we can rebuild and thrive once again. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 10. It's been a few weeks since we left our last base, and we've been traveling non-stop. The three of us, Mark, Alex, and I, have grown closer during our journey, and it's been a welcome change from the constant stress of survival. We've talked about our pasts and shared stories about our lives before the world ended. I've even opened up about my time with the SCP Foundation, something I've been hesitant to do in the past. Mark and Alex have been great listeners and have offered their own perspectives on everything. It's been refreshing to have people to talk to who aren't just focused on survival. I've started to feel like we're becoming a makeshift family, and it's a comforting thought in this harsh world. Our travels have taken us through all sorts of terrain, from dense forests to arid deserts. We've come across abandoned towns and cities, all picked clean of resources long ago. We've also encountered other survivors along the way, some friendly and others not so much. But we've managed to avoid any major confrontations so far. During our journey, we've also started to develop a sort of routine. We take turns keeping watch at night and setting up camp in safe locations. We scavenge for supplies during the day and make sure to keep moving so we don't become easy targets for any potential threats. As we travel, I can't help but feel grateful for having Mark and Alex by my side. It's been a long time since I've felt this close to anyone, and I'm thankful for their company and support. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 11. It's been months since we last encountered the group that's been hunting us down. We've been constantly on the move never staying in one place for too long, always looking over our shoulders. But today, our luck ran out. We were making our way through a deserted town when we heard the sound of footsteps behind us. We turned around to see a group of armed men approaching us, led by the same man who we fought off last time. Hello again, Elizabeth he sneered. I see you've made some new friends. We're not looking for trouble I said, trying to defuse the situation. Oh, I think you are he said, pointing his gun at us. You see, we've been tracking you for a while now. And we know that you have something we want. We don't have anything of value Alex said, trying to reason with them. Wrong answer the man said, as his men closed in on us. Mark quickly drew his weapon, and the air was filled with the sound of gunfire. We fought tooth and nail, taking out as many of the men as we could. But they were too many, and we were outnumbered. Just when things were looking bleak, we heard the sound of a helicopter overhead. It was the Foundation's rescue team, sent to extract us. We made a run for it, dodging bullets and weaving through the ruins of the town. When we finally reached the helicopter, we climbed aboard and took off, leaving our pursuers behind. As we flew away, I couldn't help but feel grateful for the Foundation's intervention. If it weren't for them, we would have been dead by now. But at the same time, I couldn't shake off the feeling that we were just pawns in a much larger game. And that the stakes were much higher than we could ever imagine. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 12. It's been a few days since we were rescued by the remnants of what was once the SCP Foundation. It turns out that they had managed to secure a super secure bunker that had remained untouched by the chaos on the surface. But it wasn't exactly a rescue. More like a desperate move to save as many people as possible from the impending doom that SCP-7588 had brought upon us. The bunker was filled with all kinds of people, civilians, low-ranking Foundation staff, site directors, and other personnel. The world outside had become a wasteland, with every site destroyed and every anomaly breached. It was a miracle that we hadn't encountered any of them yet. As we were entering the bunker, a huge bang sounded, and we looked up to see the sun shining a brilliant blue. The temperature rose rapidly, and we rushed inside, closing the door behind us. We knew that this was SCP-7588's doing, another solar flare. Inside the bunker, all our positions in life no longer mattered. We were all in this together, fighting for survival. It was a strange feeling being around so many people who were once your enemies but now they were all just fellow survivors trying to make it through each day. I spent most of my time with Mark and Alex, who had become my closest allies. We wandered around the bunker, trying to make sense of our new reality. 
We talked about our past lives and how we ended up here. I even told them about my work as a research assistant for Dr. Samuels, the head researcher of SCP-7588. It was during these talks that I felt like we were establishing a bond, a sense of trust that was necessary for our survival. But we couldn't let our guards down. The group that had been chasing us was still out there, and they were growing closer with each passing day. We were all in this together, but we were also fighting against each other for the limited resources in the bunker. It was a constant struggle, and tensions ran high. But we had to keep going, had to keep fighting, because that was the only way to survive in this new world. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 13. The world is truly coming to an end. The sun's flare has changed everything. The temperature has risen to hundreds of degrees Celsius, making it impossible for anyone to survive outside. It's been days since the flare hit, and we've lost count of how long we've been stuck in this bunker. Yesterday was the most terrifying day of my life. A bright flash shone against the bunker gate, and people began to open it, thinking that the temperature outside had cooled down. But as soon as the gate was opened, the air felt like molten lava, and everyone within 200 feet of the gate was suddenly burning. People were screaming in agony, and the chaos that followed was indescribable. The gate was instantly closed, and those who managed to escape the heat crawled back into the bunker. The smell of burnt flesh filled the air, and I could hear the cries of people dying. Mark, Alex, and I were at the very back of the bunker, so we barely felt the effects of the heat. But we saw the devastation that happened just a few feet away from us. It was a horrible sight. It's hard to comprehend what's happening outside. The world we knew is gone. The sun's flare has destroyed everything. And to make matters worse, we were being chased by that group before the flare hit. But now, it seems like they've been burned to ashes by the sudden increase in temperature. I don't know what to feel about this. On one hand, we don't have to worry about that group anymore. On the other hand, the fact that they were burned to ashes is a gruesome reminder of what's happening outside. The dim light flickers overhead, casting eerie shadows on the damp walls of the bunker. I can feel the weight of desperation pressing down on me, and the gnawing hunger in my belly only intensifies my anxiety. As the days drag on, I can feel myself slowly slipping away, my mind playing cruel tricks on me. The walls seem to be closing in, the air thick and suffocating. We're running out of food and water, and we're trapped in this bunker. The situation is dire, and with each passing moment, I feel like I am slowly going insane. But I have to keep pushing on. I tell myself, swallowing down the fear that threatens to consume me. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 14. The situation in the bunker is getting worse by the day. People are fighting over the remaining supplies of food and water, which are running dangerously low. We've tried to ration what we have, but it's not enough. And to make matters worse, the heat from the sun's flare has been seeping into the bunker, making it unbearable to be inside for too long, although we can't go anywhere else without melting. Mark, Alex, and I are trying to stay together, but it's becoming increasingly difficult as tensions rise. We've had to fend off a few people who have tried to take our supplies by force. It's heartbreaking to see how people have turned on each other in this crisis. We're all in this together, but it feels like everyone is just out for themselves. I'm starting to feel hopeless. The world outside is a wasteland, and the only refuge we have is rapidly deteriorating. I can't help but wonder if this is how it's going to end for us. Fighting over scraps until we're all gone. I know I have to keep fighting for survival, but it's getting harder and harder to hold on to hope. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 15. I can barely keep my eyes open as I write this. The exhaustion is overwhelming and I'm not sure how much longer I can keep going. The three of us have been huddled together in the corner of the bunker for days now, barely speaking, just watching the others fight and bicker over scraps of food and drops of water. I can't even remember the last time I ate anything substantial. Mark and Alex seem to be holding up better than me, but even they look defeated. We've talked about it, of course. We've talked about how hopeless it all seems, how we're probably going to die in this hellish place. I just wish there was something we could do Alex says, his voice hoarse and tired. Like what? Mark asks, 
his eyes glancing around the room at the chaos unfolding. I don't know Alex says, shrugging. But just sitting here and waiting to die, it's not a good plan. We could try to make a run for it I suggest, surprising myself with the sudden burst of energy in my voice. Mark and Alex both turn to look at me, their expressions a mix of disbelief and hope. Are you serious? Mark asks, his eyebrows furrowed. I don't know I say, shaking my head. But what other choice do we have? We can't just sit here and wait for death. Silence falls over us for a moment as we all contemplate the idea. It seems ridiculous, impossible even, but at this point, anything is worth a shot. I'm in Alex says, nodding resolutely. Mark takes a deep breath, his eyes fixed on the ground as he thinks it over. Me too he finally says, meeting my gaze. We sit in silence for a few more minutes, just gathering our thoughts and trying to come up with some kind of plan. It's a long shot, and we all know it, but it's better than just waiting for death to come for us. I don't know what's going to happen next, but I'm glad that I have Mark and Alex by my side. Whatever the future holds, we'll face it together. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 16. I was feeling elated after both Mark and Alex agreed to my plan, but as I was thinking about it, I realized that I didn't have a real plan. Going outside would be certain death, and I hadn't even considered that. As I voiced my concerns, Mark and Alex looked at each other, then back at me. What do you mean you don't have a plan? Mark asked, his voice rising in anger. I mean, I don't know how we're going to survive out there I replied, my voice shaking. Alex chimed in, you got us all worked up about this plan, and now you're telling us it's a death wish. I didn't know it was a death wish when I suggested it I replied, defensively. You didn't think about it at all. Mark snapped. How could you be so reckless? I didn't have an answer. They were right. I hadn't thought things through. I was so desperate to find a way out of here that I didn't stop to consider the consequences. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 17. I can't believe it. It's just the three of us now. We've been through so much together, and now we're at the end of the line. To make matters worse, there's only enough food and water left for one person. Alex and Mark looked at each other, and I could see the fear in their eyes. I knew what was coming next. They began fighting for the food, throwing punches and kicking each other. I tried to separate them, but they were too strong and too desperate. I watched in horror as they both fell to the ground, their bodies battered and broken. The last of the food spilled out of the bag, and I knew it was all over. I was the only one left, and I didn't know how to go on. I sat there for hours, feeling numb and empty. I didn't want to live in this world without my friends. I wanted to join them in whatever came next. I was tired of existing, tired of fighting to survive. I just wanted it all to end. But then, something inside me shifted. Maybe it was the adrenaline or the survival instinct kicking in, but I knew I had to keep going. I had to find a way to survive, even if it seemed impossible. So, I picked myself up and started to explore the bunker, searching for any supplies or tools that could help me. It wasn't much, but it was something. And maybe, just maybe, it would be enough to keep me alive a little longer. Elizabeth. Journal Entry 18. This is it. This is my final goodbye. I can feel my body slowly shutting down as I write this. SCP-7588 truly destroyed the world. It was like nothing I've ever seen before. The last few days have been agonizingly slow. Hunger and thirst have taken over my body. I know that I will soon die, and to be honest, it doesn't matter whether it's from hunger or thirst. All the supplies have run out, and there's nothing left to sustain me. It's hard to believe that just a few months ago, I had a family, friends, and a life outside this bunker. But now, all that is left is the emptiness that surrounds me. The only sound I hear is my own breathing, and the only thing I see is the darkness that envelops me. I've lost the will to live. The thought of dying no longer scares me. It's almost as if death would be a release from this never-ending misery. I know that nobody will find me, and nobody will know what happened to me. 
I will simply become another victim of SCP-7588, a forgotten name in a forgotten world. As I close this journal for the last time, I can't help but imagine a world where things turned out differently. A world where we were able to find safety and rebuild. But I know deep down that it's just a fantasy, a desperate